guys, let's get into this. We are uh, still in module two. We are in lesson nine tonight. We are, hey guys, let's get into this. We are on lesson nine. Um, lesson nine's target is to fluently use our multi-digit multiplication and use that power to solve word problems. Um, we are going to bring along all of these amazing skills that we've collected along our journey into module two so far. Um, it's gone pretty quickly. I can't believe we're already on lesson nine. And then we're going to use those amazing powers to solve word problems. A few of you probably know exactly what three letters I'm going to write here. I am writing RDW. RDW, that is our strategy that we use when we're solving word problems. If you're faced with a word problem, please read the word problem. It's really difficult to solve a word problem if you haven't read it yet. After you've read the word problem, draw it out. Draw some sort, I say some sort, I think some of you are already guessing that we could use an area diagram or a tape or a tape diagram. Um, draw it. Make the information that is given to you in the word problem um, visually appealing. Make it visually organized. It'll be much easier for your brain to take in, process that information from a picture as opposed to this long sentence. Um, so we've read, we draw, and then at the end we're going to write the answer, the correct answer that is. So let's dig into number one. Number one, an office space in New York City measures 48 feet by 56 feet. If it sells for $565 per square foot, what is the total cost of the office space? So throughout module two, we've been doing a ton of multiplication. So I'm assuming that you guys, oh, Cal wants to play here. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. He's <laughs> fine. Uh, we're going to multiply. Well, first of all, let's not even think about multiplying first. Let's think about drawing the best square I can right now. You guys probably noticed. Cal. You guys probably noticed I got a pen and my handwriting is a bit better. Cal, chill. It's fine. It's fine. It's just multiplication. Cal's a little nervous about this multi-digit multiplication, but uh, Cal, they can do it. They're they're up for the challenge. Um, so I've drawn a square. I've labeled one. Please keep in mind this is not proportional. I've labeled one side 56, Lord, and the other side 48. Hey, honey, just let him play in here. It's fine. Um, we need to find the area. We need to find the space, how much space is inside that 56 by 48 um, foot rectangle. I know that doesn't look very rectangly. And how are we going to find the area? We're going to multiply those two numbers together. We're going to multiply 56 by 48. So that's two digits. We're going to find 56 copies of 48, or we're going to find 48 copies of 56. And let's go for it. Um, six times eight is 48. We can only fit one digit in each place value. So we're going to bring that those four tens over. Now we have to think about five times eight is 40, plus four is 44. Beautiful. Okay, so that takes care of our 8. We multiplied our 8 into our 56, so let's cross out our 8. And then let's cross out this tiny 4 up there because we don't want to be confused later. Next, now we're going to go on to the second row. We're going to multiply our four tens into 56. Keep in mind of our place, keep in mind the place value of this four, you guys. Place value was all the rage in uh, module one. I want you to bring that understanding with you to module two. This is not a four, it is four tens. We are finding 40 copies of 56. So let's think about this, 40 copies of six um, okay, we can make it a little bit simpler and think about what is 4, this is off to the side, 4 times 6 is 24, but if we want 40 copies of 6, 40, this is not an exponent, I'm trying to squeeze in a 0, 40 times 6 is 240. Um, our Anything in our second row, we're going to start with a 0 because in our second row, when we're dealing with these partial products, we're multiplying everything by a 10. This is four tens. So we have one zero. Um, you guys, I think a few of you have told me that four times 
40 times 6 is 240. So we have our 4, our 0. Now we're going to have to carry our 200 up top. Um, now we have to think about 40 times 5 or 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20 plus 2 is 20. Two. Okay, so we just multiplied two two-digit numbers together and we haven't even broken a sweat yet. Now we have two partial products. We have two partial products because this 48 has two place values. I'm just going to check my notes to make sure I'm doing everything correctly. Okay, so let's try adding now. I know we have a lot of friends that love to add up there in the crowd. 8 plus 0 is 8. 4 plus 4, wow, 8 again. 4 plus 2, 6. And then 2 plus nothing, as it turns out, is 2. So the square footage of this office space in New York City, the 56 by 48 foot. This looks very appealing. I mean, I'm sure this will sell quickly. The area, the, the space inside that rectangle is 2,688 feet squared. Okay, but we are not done yet. The fun has just started. We have some more information in our word problem. Each foot, each square foot, it sells for $565. One square foot of this office space in New York City, this orange blob, yes, I know it's shocking, sells for $565 per square foot. And that may come as a shock to some of you, but that's actually um, the New York real estate prices are astounding. Um, so if we're being told one square foot is $565. I'm trying to draw an arrow. That's not the best arrow. We want to know, we don't, we're not interested in buying one square foot of real estate. We want 2,688 square feet of real estate. So what we need um, is we need to find 2,688 2, times what? That's how many feet we have. What is the price per square foot? $565. Wow, I must tell you guys, this pen really makes life much easier. I know my writing is not perfect, but it's much, much more legible. So we're going to find out how, what would the cost for 2,688 square feet, um, what would the total cost be if each... Um, square foot is $565. Um, so let's go ahead and bye, bye, bye. multiply through. We're going to find 565 copies of 2,688 and let's just go for it. We're going to come up with one, two, three partial products because 565 is one, two, three digits. So 5 times 8 is 40. So we have our 0. We're going to be, bring our 4 tens over to the next place value. 8 times 5 is 40 plus 4 is 44. We're going to bring that 4 over. 6 times 5 is 30 plus 4 is 34. Again, we're bringing another 3 along. 2, two times 5, I'm sorry, 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3 is 13. Please try to keep everything really, really nice and lined up. Now we're looking, we're coming to our second row. We're going to find our second partial product. Um, two, oops, sorry guys, I made a little mistake here. Two times five is 10. I forgot to add my three, so it should be 13. Thanks for your patience on this. Okay, so we should have one, three, four, four, oh, for that second. Line. Um, okay, so now we're going to find our second partial product. Keep in mind, we're multiplying that 6 through, but that's actually not a 6, it's a 60. So that's why we have our 0 there, because um, 60 times 8 is going to end in a 0. Um, 6 times 8 is 48. 60 times 8, however, that was 480. Um, so let's go ahead. We put our 0 down already. Now we need our 8. And our four. Oh, we'll just reuse that four. Now we need six times eight, which is 48 plus four is 52. Put down our two, and then we're going to bring up our five. We already used that four, so we're going to cross it out. And you know what? We already multiplied our five through, so let's cross that out as well. Um, now we have six times six is 36 plus five is 41. So we have our one, we're going to bring over our four, cross that three out because we already used it. Now we need six times two is 12 plus four. Um, 12, 12 plus four is 16. 
If I am going too quickly or if you are having trouble keeping up, please feel free at any moment to pause and or rewind. So our second pro partial product is 16, I'm sorry, 161,280. How many partial products is this problem going to have? It's going to have one, two, three partial products because 565 has three digits. And we're going to multiply each of those digits into 2,688. Next, we have our five. This is not a five. I'm sure you guys are getting sick of me saying this. It is a 500. I, that phrase may haunt you in your dreams. So let's go ahead. That's why I have one, two zeros here because we're going to multiply 500 into eight. Five times eight is 40. 500, let's stack it, let's, and please feel free to use as much paper as you need to for these problems because there's a lot of, there's a lot of thinking going on. There's a lot of processing happening in these really big problems. Five times eight is 40, but you guys know that that's not a five times eight, that's a 500 times eight. So let's think about what is 500 times eight. Well, it's going to be a 40, with two zeros slapped on the end, okay? So I have my two zeros here. I'm going to add one zero and then I'm going to actually bring my four up. Yikes, it's getting a little crowded up there, guys. We do not have enough room to do this problem, Eureka, in case you guys are watching. Um, now we have five times eight once again and we're going to add four, uh, five times eight is 40, we're going to add a four. Uh, and we will get 44. Beep, beep. That cow's playing with his cars. And now we need 5 times 6 is 30. 30 plus 4 is 34. So we have our 4. And we're going to bring our 3 over. Let's cross this 4 out because we're done with you, 4. Now we need 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3 is 13. Um, I wouldn't give myself a perfect score on keeping things lined up but I am trying my best right now. And that's, that's, all, that's all I can offer. Um, I'm really excited that we have such a gigantic number because um, this real estate is gonna be pretty pricey. So let's go ahead and add up our one, two, three partial products and see what we get. Now, of course, I'm merging into the next problem. Last time I checked zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Secret word, pumpkin. 4 plus 8 plus 0 is 12, so we're going to have a 2, carry our 1 over. 1 plus 5, I'm sorry, 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 2 is 7. Beautiful. Then we have a 3, very sloppy, blobby 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 4 is 8. And then we have 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 4 is 11. I love to add and sing. 1 plus 1 plus 3 is 5. 1 plus nothing is one we are gonna need a lot of money if you want to buy this office space in the end it's going to be one million five hundred and eighteen thousand seven hundred and twenty wow it's a lot it's a lot of cash who's got that kind of cash um miles you want to write a check for that okay let's look i'm not going to go the whole way for number two but let's just read it and again sorry my my writing blood into it um okay so gemma and leah young entrepreneurs are both jewelry makers gemma made 106 beaded necklaces leah made oh my gosh what does that say 39 it says 39 more necklaces than gemma First question, each necklace they make has exactly 104 beads on it. How many beads did both girls use all together while making their necklaces? Okay, I smell a tape diagram. I just feel like that would be perfect in this problem. So let's make the best rectangles we can. This rectangle is going to represent Gemma and what she made. And then I'm going to have an L, a Leah tape diagram, and that is going to represent what Leah made. Leah, if we go back to the problem, made 39 more necklaces than Gemma. They're both jewelry makers, but Gemma made 106 necklaces. And I'm getting this information, I'm just going back to the text. Leah made 39 more necklaces than Gemma. So let's set, set up this tape 
tape diagram and see what sort of, I'm sorry, 106 plus 39. Um, we're going to use multiplication. I'm not going to do this whole thing, but I want you guys to play along at home. Um, Gemma made 106 necklaces and each of her 106 necklaces had 104 beads on it. So we are going to have to multiply those two numbers together. And then Leah, first of all, you guys are going to have to figure out, oh, what in the world is 106 plus 39? And then once you find that sum, you're going to have to multiply that sum times 104 because each of her necklaces had 104 beads on it. So I want you guys to do this and you're going to give me this answer to 2A in the learn section of the TED Ed video. And um, thanks for listening and sorry if Cal's beep beeps in the background were too loud. And can't wait to see you guys tomorrow and I'm excited for a great week.